Um, so the GR Devices package has a few different functions to help you deal with colors, and the ones that I'm going to talk about in this lecture are the color ramp function and the color ramp palette function. Uh, basically, these two functions do uh, take palettes of colors and interpolate between them. Uh, so the, the the model that you can think of is basically you know if a painter has a, his palette or and uh, there are a four or two or three blotches of specific colors on that palette. And then what you might do is take your brush and kind of mix between the various colors of the various uh, blotches on that palette to make new colors that are blends of the original colors that you had on the palette. Um, so I've never done any actual painting, so th I just the only thing I know about painting is you know from TV and movies. But that's kind of what I imagine um, a painter would do: is take these primary colors and then blend them together with the brush. And so that's what the color ramp and the color ramp palette functions do: they take a set of colors that make up a palette and they interpolate in between them uh, numerically, of course, um, to make new colors that are blends of the original colors. Um, another function that may be of interest to you is the colors function, uh, which just you, you just execute it with no arguments, and it gives you a character vector uh, of all the names of the colors that you can use in a plotting function. Uh, so these are colors that you can reference by name uh, rather than having to reference their kind of red, green, red, green, and blue uh, values that we'll talk about later. Um, so the color ramp function specifically takes a palette of colors, uh, and it returns another function. Um, and this this function that's returned by color ramp will take values between zero and one, indicating the extremes of the color palette. And so a similar function that already exists in R is the gray function, uh, and the gray function interpolates between black and white. Uh, and so um, it gives you kind of all the shades of gray that are in between black and white. Uh, the color ramp function is a generalization because it'll take any set of colors in your palette and it'll give you a function back that takes numbers between 0 and 1 and kind of interpolate between the extremes of the color palette. Um, the color ramp palette is a very similar type of function. Uh, it takes a palette of colors and what it does is it returns another function that rather than taking a, z a value between 0 and 1, um, it would takes an integer argument uh, and will return a vector of colors interpolating that palette. So this is similar to the heat.colors function or the topo.colors function. So, uh, so let's just a very quick example here. Uh, in the top here, I've created. Um, I'm going to use a palette that consists of two colors, red and blue. So you can imagine that on your little painter's palette here, you've got a blotch of red and a blotch of blue, and you're going to mix them together in varying degrees to create new colors. So uh, I, when I pass this to color ramp, uh, it returns a function back, um, and that function I've called pal. And, and now pal can take numbers between zero and one. Um, so when I say pal of zero, what do I get back? I get a little uh, matrix here with one row and three columns, and the three columns indicate are are represent the colors red, blue, and green. Um, and so um, in the first column, I've got 255, uh, which is the maximum value that I can have in this for the for these colors. Uh, the numbers that you can specify go between zero and 255. So there's 256 total numbers that you can specify for each color. Uh, and so when pal is uh, when I, when pal is zero, it gives the argument zero. Basically, what it gives me back is red because that's kind of one end of the color spectrum that I've specified in my palette. The other end being blue, of course. And so I've got the maximum value for red, I've got zero for green, and I've got zero for blue. So that color is red. Uh, when I say pal of one down here, um, you see I've got zero for red, zero for green, and then I've got the maximum 255 for blue. So this just gives me the color blue. So that's the other end of my color palette. So what if I do something in between, like PAL of 0 0.5? So this gives me something that this should give me a color that's kind of in the middle of red and blue. So it's going to give me 127.5 uh, for red, and then 0 for green, and 127.5 for blue. So it's kind of half red, half blue, whatever that color is uh, happens to be. Notice that there's no green in any of these calls because um, uh, when you interpolate between red and blue, you don't encounter green along the way. So um, if I were to give a sequence of numbers between 0 and 1, uh, PAL would give me a sequence of colors between red and blue. So here I'm giving a, a sequence between 0 and 1 that's a, at, that's a length 10. So it starts at 0 and it ends at 1, uh, and there's uh, 8 numbers in between. 
And so when I pass this sequence to PAL, you'll see at the very top here I've got, I start with red, so it's maximum red, and then zero for green, zero for blue. And I slowly reduce the red amount and increase the blue amount until I get to the bottom here where I've got all blue and no green and no red. So those are the various colors that you get in between red and blue as you interpolate the palette. So that's the color ramp function. The color ramp palette function is very similar, uh, but it just it, the, the type of function that it returns is slightly different. So here I'm passing it a different, a different palette. So this palette has two blotches. It has a red and a yellow blotch on it. And, the, and we're going to try to interpolate between those two colors. Uh, and so I've got a function here that's returned by color ramp palette called pal. Um, and now pal is going to take integer arguments, not numbers between 0 and 1. So suppose I give it a uh, 2. So pal of 2 will return two colors that interpolate the palette. Now because the palette itself only has two colors, uh, it won't act, when I just give it 2, it'll just give me the two colors on the palette, so the f first being red and the second being yellow. And so the, the way that the format here is slightly different, instead of giving a, a matrix with red, green, and blue values, it gives me a character vector um, which has uh, numbers for or, or values for red, green, and blue, blue that are represented in hexadecimal. And so uh, if you ignore the pound symbol there, you see there are two digits, uh, there are six digits in each character string. The first two represent red, the second two represent green, and the third two represent blue. Um, so you can see for the first number here, I've got FF0000. So in hexadecimal, F is the largest number you can have. So FF on the red, the, the red pair means a maximum for red, and 00, zero for green, 00, zero for blue. So that's red. Uh, in the second string here, I've got FF for red, FF for green, and then 00, zero for blue. So I've got the maximum on red and the maximum on, on green, and I got nothing for blue. So what does that give me? Well, that gives me yellow. I'm mean, Combine red and green, I get yellow. And so that's the other end of the spectrum on the palette. So now if I say pal of 10, you'll see uh, the first element here is going to be red, because it's FF on red and zero on everything else. The last element here is going to be yellow, because it's FF on red, FF on green, zero on the blue. But then in between, I've got my interpolation of colors. So uh, you'll see that there's there'll be... Uh, there'll be there'll be some red, and then there'll be mixins, a little bit of green uh, as you go along here. For mo for all the colors, there's no blue because you're not encounter blue when you interpolate between red and yellow. So you can see now the representations of the colors in hexadecimal here changing as you go from red to yellow.